guys, we're going to take a look at the differences between GIMP and Inkscape. These are two of the most popular packages for graphics in the open source environment. They use different types of graphics, vector for Inkscape and raster for GIMP. We're going to take a look at what those differences are. We're going to start off inside of Photoshop. I've got a bunch of vector shapes here. And if you, if I select one of these shapes, you can see it's made up of four nodes and lines connecting them. If I click on one of the nodes, you can see two bars that come out of the node. These two bars, we can think of these as the vectors and vectors represent strength and direction. So the strength in this case is represented by the length and the direction And you can see that changing the strength and the direction will change the kind of curve that we get. So basically, vector shapes are fundamentally mathematical objects. Inside of Inkscape, we can see how this can be applied to create a design. This is a complex design which uses a myriad of different shapes. And if I just hover over the design, you can see those individual shapes. It's a very complex design. And here on the left hand side, you can see the tools that are used to create and manipulate these shapes. One property, which is very important with vector shapes is that you can kind of zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And it really kind of retains that curvature. The curves remain true. They remain absolutely accurate. And that's obviously going to be important if you're exporting a design and that design needed to go somewhere, that design needed to go somewhere like a letterhead, a business letterhead, as well as somewhere like a truck or a plane. It needed to be scaled up. Vector designs are extremely good for that. And they're also good for things like logos. So sometimes you need to design logos very small. Sometimes you need to print them very large. That's the kind of thing that vector design is very good at. It is also very good at illustration, as we can see here. Now I imported the image inside of GIMP and GIMP is what's known as a raster based editor. If we take this image and zoom in now, when I imported this image, GIMP asked me for a resolution because really inside of Inkscape, we weren't working with resolution, but inside of GIMP, we have to work with resolution. And as I zoom in, you can see the consequences of that. There is a maximum resolution and we've reached that maximum resolution. Everything looks pixelated. So if I wanted to scale this up, there would come a limit at which point things begin to fall apart in terms of appearance. Now inside of Photoshop, we can take these vector shapes and we can actually scale them very simply. And we can scale them back and they retain their true shape. However, if I were to copy this, duplicate the layer, I can convert this into what's known as a raster. And a raster layer contains the same information, but now it's held inside pixels. It's no longer basically a mathematical formula. If I was to resize this down and then to resize it up, we would end up with something that looks like that. This is horribly pixelated. And that's because when we resized it down, the information was lost. When we resized it up, it hadn't got enough information to recreate the original shape. So the key difference between raster and vector is that vector, vector shapes can be translated. You can rotate them. You can rescale them. They retain their properties. Another key difference is what happens when you finish the design. This is a design that I downloaded from the Inkscape website. I'm going to show you how I can now actually edit this design. So it doesn't matter that the design is actually complete. I can go in, select an individual component and change the color. I can apply gradient inside of GIMP here. Uh, we've got very different functionality. We've got these layers 
And if I open up one of the layers, you can see that I use the paths, the very complex paths in that design to create this kind of blueprint effect. And this effect is actually held on several layers, all blended together in very complex ways. We can do more blending. And here we've got a layer using different colors. We've got a layer mask and the results that we get are something that is quite different to what we were seeing inside of Inkscape. Let's bring out the tool that I used for tracing out these paths. And you can see we can actually create a kind of a chalky effect. Now this is being applied directly to the layer. It's fundamentally changing the layer. And once the edit is done, it is in fact done. You can't go back. For instance, I cannot, I can undo this, but I can't change the colors of the objects inside of this design without going to some crazy lens to select the individual shapes using some of the selection tools inside of GIMP. One thing that I can do is to apply global changes. And these global changes can be applied to layers that can be applied to the entire image. One of the benefits of working with raster images. Now, if you look at this image, it looks perfect and it is very good. But if you were doing retouching, you might want to go in and retouch the woman's face. Now, someone has already done that. This is a very good photo, no doubt from Adobe stock. But if I zoom into this area, area here, the professional retoucher may be publishing this in a magazine. He could go in, just really zoom in and using the infamous clone stamp tool, you go in and just see those little bits and pieces and make sure I call these little distracting elements in a photograph. You can go crazy and just remove anything that is not perfect. And if you're publishing this image, say in a magazine, you might want to go that extra step. So the ability to really zoom in and see the individual pixels, that's one of the strengths of the software. And if you want to, you can actually go ahead and edit the individual pixels. Some people do that. It produces a very interesting type of art known as pixel art. As well as these types of global changes, you can apply other types of global changes. Let's, for instance, apply a newsprint effect. And this effect is quite taxing on system resources. But inside of GIMP, once I hit the OK button, it's applied and the software doesn't need to continually recalculate what that effect looks like. So vector software has this ability to allow you to go back and re-edit. You can change the colors. And that's again, something that will be important if you are doing a design work for a client and the client maybe wanted you to change some of the elements. Now, another really important difference comes from those two previous ones. When you're using Inkscape, Inkscape is all about having a powerful processor. It needs to recalculate every element inside of the image to show you those are the elements on the screen. With software like GIMP, if I go back to this design, all this information here is held in the layers. So GIMP needs to have a huge amount of memory in which to store all the information. And when I'm working on very large designs, when I'm working on photographs, maybe HDR photographs, 32 bit images, GIMP can require a huge amount of system RAM to process that. And certain effects as well can require the software to calculate pixel by pixel certain values. Again, that will require a lot of memory. So GIMP can really reward you for having a very powerful system if you're doing professional photo work. Inkscape is not quite as demanding. You can run Inkscape on most PCs. Another area where GIMP has got more demands is it does require you to save sometimes very, very large files. This particular design, for instance, is half a gigabyte on my hard disk. The original image from inside of Inkscape was about half a megabyte. So it's about a thousand times smaller. Now let's discuss some of the similarities between the two pieces of software. They're both open source. They're both free to download. You can use them. You can install them on as many PCs as you want. 
GIMP has got two tools that are actually vector tools. One is the text tool, the other one is the path tool. Inkscape can also import photographs. And when you import photographs into Inkscape, you can then turn them into vector designs. And this is what I've done with this particular photograph. If we move it out of the way, you can see the original photograph and you can see the contours traced out inside of Inkscape. This is now a vector design with all the contours there being represented by paths. We can take such an image back into GIMP and we can apply a filter, let's say filter that we used before. And given that we've got those, those sort of smooth contours inside of the design, I could, for instance, create a comic book effect. And this comic book effect will be a lot more convincing because it's got those contours that you find inside of comic books. So even though GIMP and Inkscape are fundamentally different, you can kind of use them together and you can get real creative. Guys, that is going to be it for this particular video. I hope you found that useful. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe for more videos. There is a ton of GIMP tutorials on the channel. Subscribe, hit the uh, notification bell and hopefully see you around.